stand with me for the reading of the word, would you? I'm going to ask you to participate um, with me this morning in with everything that has been happening um, in our nation. And by the way, I'm in the book of uh, Psalms chapter 11. With everything that has happened in our nation, I thought it would be a good idea today, as you saw in the sign, for us to pray and seek the face of God. Because, folks, there's never time before we need God in this nation. We need God to come in and do a miracle. We need a miracle. I said we need a miracle this morning. And what I'm going to ask you to do over the next course of 25 minutes or so, you'll see it up on the screen. We're going to be praying. I'm not going to be the only one praying. On some of them, I've, I've got um, that I, you'll see that I felt to present to you as to pray over. I'm going to ask you to get in a little group and pray. Would that be okay? And we're going to pray together. I mean, we're not, we're, we're not going to just listen to somebody pray. I want you to pray. Amen? Scripture says to us, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can we do? Well, the answer is verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple, and the Lord is on his heavenly throne. No matter what it looks like on the outside, God is still on the throne. God is still in charge. Father, I want to thank you in these next few moments as we as a church, God, we're just one church, but God, we have a voice. We have a voice into the heavenlies because you said come boldly to the throne room of grace to receive help and mercy in time of need. We come boldly. We speak and pray boldly today because, God, we know that you are the only one that is able to, uh, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to give us wisdom and how to respond within the nation, within the atrocities that are happening, within the uh, 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 things that are going on, uh, even in the natural realm and the supernatural realm. And the, um, God, we, we just need you this morning. And so as a church, we are going to, we, we, God, we dedicate these next few minutes to, um, to praying. And we know these are not our only moments of prayer but we dedicate these next few minutes to praying over these areas, God, that you have led me to uh, place before this this congregation. And I I pray that that something would arrest our attention this morning and know that we can make a difference. And it is though not by might, it is not by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And we ask your anointing in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Just, just for a few moments, please be seated. And I'm, Susan, I'm going to ask if you'd come to the keyboard here, and um, I'm going to ask our team to be ready in just a few minutes. Not right yet, but um, someone said it this way, for far too long the world has seen what we can do. It's time for the world to see what God can do. What a powerful statement. We need God in this world. We need God in this place. The answer is not our government. The answer is not uh, necessarily our families. The answer is not the school system. The answer is not some better plan. The answer is not from a political party. The answer is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that changes not. God never changes. Franklin Graham, he put it this way. He said, I believe our nation is in trouble today, probably more than I've seen in my lifetime. We are contending with issues that are causing the very foundation of our country to crumble. Our moral and spiritual roots are eroding. The economy is misleading. Family life is disintegrating. And political forces are at unprecedented odds. There seems to be very few leaders who will take a stand for God and for his word. It can be tempting to believe that America has reached a point of no return. While these factors cause despair, we are reminded in Scripture that with God, nothing is impossible. How many of you still believe that today? Amen? Nothing is impossible with God. No problem is too great for him. 
seasons of distress and uncertainty and hardship. They call for faithful, fervent prayer by God's people and reminds us of our responsibility to humble ourselves before our almighty God. We've tried and we've messed it up. But when we humble ourselves before God, we are saying, God, you're in charge. And I believe and I don't just believe, I know and I expect, God, you're going to do something about where we're at. I would declare to you this morning it's a crucial time for us to individually and collectively seek the divine intervention of God for the challenges facing us today. Folks, I don't have the answers. You know, we are we are talked to. I, we 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 see all the things from uh, uh, that is that is coming against the the world, and 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 even uh, we see it uh, locally. We see it uh, the demonic moving locally. We see the demonic moving nationally. We see storms like we've never seen before. Yes, I do believe the word says, and I agree with it, that perilous times shall come. So do we just put ourselves in our little church coming and say, well, it's going to happen, and God, we just pray, get us out of here. I believe that would be an atrocity to the word of God and a direct rebuke to what God has said because he declares to us, the Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But he said, Psalms 33, 11, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. How many of you believe that today, amen? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. You are part of that crowd that God has declared the people he chose for his inheritance. And then, of course, many would think, well, what is my prayer going to do? How can I change anything? How can I make a difference? Well, I want to remind you of what the difference that you can make according to James. When he wrote in verses chapters 5, verse 16, he said, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Just let it sink in. The effectual, the powerful The powerful, fervent, on fire. On fire. How many believe God wants to fire us up? God is not coming back for a dead church. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle that's excited for him to come back. He's coming back for those that are looking for his return. But at the same time, he is coming back for those that realize the mission that he has placed us in here in America and around the world that we can make a difference. Don't let what you see make you shrink back from praying. Let it make you feel, God, I, through my prayer, can do something about this. So I I would begin this morning by asking you to pray with me that, number one, God, we get back to what your word says and we repent. Repent. We repent individually, we repent as a church, and we repent as a nation. I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. You know, the word declares to us, let him that hath no sin cast the first stone. The scriptures tell us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Folks, there's no hope without Jesus. I don't know if you've noticed, but there is sin raging in this world. The change that has taken place even in the airwaves and the music and and lifestyles. We need Jesus. We individually need to repent before God. Say, well, I'm okay. No, Scripture says you're not. Scripture said, our righteousness is as filthy rags. I remind you, 1 John 1, 9 was not written for salvation. 1 John 1, 9 was written to the church. If we confess our sins, our motives, our actions, our imperfections, our 
weaknesses, our out God, we repent. The word says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Before the healing of the land comes, God says we got to seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Before I ask you to join with somebody else, I'm going to ask you first, number one, positionally just you and God. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord and you cry out to God, God, I repent of my sins. Repent for the, your sin. Repent for the, for the sins of the church. Repent for the sins of the nation. When repent, God, for, God, forgive us. Father, I pray over this house. I pray over this, this personal house right now, my life. We repent before you. We've allowed sin to be rampant. We, we've, we've not served you like we should. We've not passionately come to you like we should. God, I ask your forgiveness. I pray mercy. I pray mercy. I pray mercy, God, grace in this house. God, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? You said if we confess our sins, you'll be faithful and just to forgive. We don't just confess the sins of somebody else. We confess the sins of us personally. Forgive us, oh God. Let a powerful revival of the freshness of the grace of God and of the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us from every sin. In the name of Jesus, could we confess and repent for the sins of this nation? Could we confess? God, I know I know everyone has to confess to come to Jesus. I get that. But could we pray for the mercy of God over this nation? Come on, would you pray out loud? Don't just pray silently. Let's, let's pray fervently. In the name of Jesus, we pray over America right now, God. We pray that, God, in the midst of all the sin, in the midst of all the turmoil, in the midst of all the demonic activity, God, you would, would, would extend your righteousness to this nation. In the name of Jesus, God, the demonic attack. God, we, we, we each have a choice. And it seems that degradation and, and the things of this world that has, has become now just normal, but you still look at it and call it sin. And you said, if my people would humble themselves and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven. Then you would forgive our sins. Then you would heal our land. We pray over it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to find about three, four, five people. Just get with them for a moment and look up here. I want you to find about three, four, five people around. If you need to step out to one side of the church, just go. We're going to do it. We're going to be a little bit different this morning. I want you to find your group. In the name of Jesus. Now, if I look this way, I want to give you instruction. Although the understand the challenges in front of this nation are great. Our God is greater. I said our God is greater. We desperately need a great spiritual awakening. Some of you may feel directed to come and just pray in this altar with me. I, I, whatever you feel. And your group come around here. You may want to change groups and just keep praying with different ones. But we desperately need a great awakening. And may the Holy Spirit do a work in our hearts, in our churches, in our communities that will reverberate across our nation. Could we pray for the healing of our nation? Come on, church. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, right now for the healing of the United States of America. God, I believe this country was established upon the foundations of the principles of God and righteousness. We pray healing. We pray, God, that you would save our land. In the name above every name, we pray, God. Hallelujah. God, save us as a nation. God, we ask that you would heal us. We ask that you would fill us. We ask, God, for favor. We ask for divine intervention. We pray over this nation right now. In the name above every name, we pray, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God, we need you, Lord. Lord, we need your direction. We need supernatural influx of your power. God, heal our land. Heal our land, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Could we, as you're praying, understand within that framework of praying for the healing of our nation? If you would look up on the screen, there's there's one more, there's another area. We need to pray that as a nation we would return to God. The book of Acts says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. May we pray that God would return to this nation in the name of Jesus and that this nation would turn back to you, Father. We claim it, Holy Spirit. We claim your divine anointing. We claim it right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, give people hearts after you, Lord. Give people hearts after you in the name of Jesus. God, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God, send us back to you. Return this nation back to you. Back to the original godly principles that we once, that we read about that this nation was founded on. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, do another work, do another work in this place. How many would say and agree with me this morning that this nation needs revival? Would you turn and look at the screen, whether the back or here in the front? I'm going to ask you to pray for spiritual renewal, revival, and salvations. I want you to read this next scripture aloud with me. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How many believe it's still God's will for him to save souls? Amen. Could we pray? If you'll put that back up. Could we pray for spiritual renewal? God, turn us back to you. Could we pray for revival? You understand revival has to do with the church. Revival is not necessarily souls getting saved. Revival is the church getting right with God. The scripture said, wilt thou not revive us again? That brings us out of the pits of death and gives us life of God. We need revival in this place. We need revival in America. We need the churches to stand up across denominational lines and and cross the lines and, and come together and say, we're not just this. We are the children of the most high God. We need revival. And I believe in the greatest soul-saving experience is coming. I believe we're going to see a harvest to rise up. Could we now, if you want to change another group or stay right where you're at, up to you. But could we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for renewal. We pray for revival. We pray that the church stands up, gets right with you, oh God. 
God, I claim it according to your word. I claim incredible, supernatural turning to you. I pray supernatural revival in the church, supernatural restoration of and renewal in the, in the nation, oh God. Because ultimately, God, we pray for salvations. We pray for salvations, God. I pray through this church we'll see more saved than we've ever seen in the history of this church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, I praise you for what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray over Matt in the name of Jesus that he will see more souls come to know Jesus than he has ever seen in his life in these last days. Let the anointing of the Spirit of God rest on him more than he has ever known, Jesus. Use him mightily for such a time as this, Father. I pray over Harrisburg United Methodist that they would be, go beyond what they've ever thought of reaching the communities with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the name above every name we pray. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I, praise you. I worship you. How many this morning, you've got family members that are not saved and they need to come to Jesus? Come on, lift your hand with me. How many you got? Father, I come in agreement with every hand that was lifted, members of their family that don't know you. I claim salvations. I claim they come to Jesus. I claim they come to the knowledge that Jesus is Lord of their life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you'll look up at the screen. Now, if you need to sit during this, sit. You can pray sitting down, standing up, walking, laying down. You, whatever you need to do. There is no directive that you have to stand. That You, you, you make the choice. But I, I, I believe God is calling us with, under the heading of praying for, for our healing of our nation. We need to pray for our leaders at the federal, state, and local levels. Now, I want to remind you of something. God sets them up and God brings them down. I believe, my personal belief is every person that gets placed in an office is there under the direction of the Spirit of God. That's Scripture. God sets up and God will bring them down. God has a plan for every person. I believe that. But my faith is not built on who's in the office or whatever office. My faith is in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And therein my trust lies. I don't lose my salvation because somebody else got in or somebody's doing this or somebody's not doing this. I don't lose my salvation on that. My salvation is rock solid in Jesus. But God says as a requirement of my walk with him, would you read this scripture aloud with me? I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. That's those you like and those you don't like. Secondly, verse 2, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior. Could we as a body pray from the very top, our president, pray our congressmen and senators, pray over our, our uh, 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 Supreme Courts, pray over the courts, pray over our governors, our mayors, our uh, all those in state offices, pray over locally, pray over the spiritual leaders in your life here in this church. Folks, I'm telling you, I need it. Uh, well, Pastor Otis and I, we, we need the wisdom of God in our families. We And the leaders in classes, the leaders in our, 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 our board members, every area that would come to mind, pray over them. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over President Trump right now that you would give him godly wisdom, that he would hear, God, not just people, but he'd hear the voice of God. 
And he would follow explicitly the word of God, not turning the left or the right. He would do what is is right in your sight. I pray over the congressmen and senators, Lord, not just those from our state, but everyone around from our nation, that you would give them godly wisdom and they would not make laws or principles based on the latest, greatest craze or or, uh, uh, they would make laws based on the word of God. I pray over our judicial system that, God, you would give them the, you have set them up to rule, but, God, give them a heart of righteousness to rule from. God, just grant to them peace and wisdom. I pray over our government uh, government master right now that you would touch him, give him godly wisdom to, to lead this wonderful state. And those that are around him, our judicial systems and our senators and and our representatives there in those areas. I pray over our local, our counties and those leaders in those counties, our our our, our sheriffs and police departments, our that you would protect them, oh God, and give them godly wisdom how to how to uh, flow into that place you've led them to. God, I pray over uh, Mayor Tecklenburg in the name of Jesus and the mayors of our other cities that are represented here. God, the councils that are around them. God, that you would give them most high godly wisdom. We pray for their protection. We pray for their healing. We pray for their salvations if they don't know you as Lord and Savior. We pray that you would direct them in every thought and every intent that it would be godly and based on the word of God. In the name of Jesus. I want you to notice on the screen These are some of the areas concerning our leaders we need to pray for. Number one, pray that our leaders would know God and serve him. Pray secondly that God would give them wisdom and surround them with godly counselors. Pray that they would stand boldly and courageously in the face of evil without backing down from righteousness. And that they, fourthly, would have ears to hear God's instructions and eyes to see his strategies. Father, we claim that in the name of Jesus. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Another area that we need healing in our country. We need to pray for the unity of our nation. We have never been so divided. We are called the United States of America, but we have never been so divided. We're divided racially. We're divided politically. We're divided family. And there's division at times even in the church. We need to pray. We need to pray for unity in America. The first of that would be we need to pray for the healing of racial divisions in our country. Do you know right now, understand that sometimes the most segregated time is in churches across our nation. And that is not God's will. What we have in this church is a miracle. Do you understand that, you know, if we started talking about not division in the respect of being divided, but how this church would be represented on the cultural map? You know, we're probably, our church is about 50 to 50 white to African American and also we have Hispanic and I'm sure there's other backgrounds as well can I tell you that just doesn't happen this is a God thing this is a God thing I want you to read this scripture loud with me how good and pleasant it is. 
when God's people live together in unity. Say it again. How good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. There's racial division between white and black, black and black, white and white. There is division socioeconomically. There's division culturally. There's division spiritually. There's division politically. Never have I seen it. No, I I know that our nation has come a long way. But you know what Satan loves to do? He loves to scratch us, not just at service, but get an open door to get deep down inside of us and destroy what God has established. I don't have any business hating any brother or sister. Because God said, if I say I love him and hate my brother, I'm lying. I'm lying. And the love of God is not in me. And I want to tell you something too, and I won't just speak as, as I feel God put this in my heart. Racial unity is not just coming together and worshiping on a Sunday morning for two hours and then never having connection ever again until the next. You see people of different faiths and cultures throughout the week. How do we respond to people? What goes through your heart as the What does the mind think of so are we? As a heart thinks, so are we? You know, last week we talked about taking the mask off. We need to take the mask off of racial division. This is something Cheryl and I, we we, we have desired and prayed for. To be able to minister to all backgrounds. I don't want to offend anybody by what I'm about to say. I'm not making apologies what I'm about to say because it was one of the greatest compliments I've ever received in probably my entire life in in this respect. There's a dear lady on the third row. She made this statement to me. If this offends you, then you get offended by anything, okay? She said, Pastor, you're a black man in a white man's body. Now, I don't know how you feel about that statement, but I take that as one of the most powerful compliments that God has opened up a door for me. It's not just say, hey, I pastor a multicultural church. I have the opportunity to do life with everybody. However, there are some things I don't understand. I told, and this is one of the, if you get offended by this, then take it up with Jesus. But a couple of weeks ago, at a Wednesday night, we were talking about a question that came up concerning some of the things that are happening right now and and I made this statement I said there's a lot of things I don't know I said I said I'm just a white boy from Alabama meaning number one I was not raised racially we loved everybody and But no, I don't know some of the challenges over the years that some of my brothers and sisters had to go through. I don't. And I ask God, God, give me understanding. And I believe that goes in all sorts of ways, whatever cultural and backgrounds we have. We all, we all got to have a background. But isn't the coolest thing when God brings all of our backgrounds and mixes us together and we're not white or black or uh, red or yellow, black or white. We're just all precious in his sight. That's, That's the miracle. 
But we are in a day when Satan is trying to stab at the unity that God has established. And there are many that are still hurting in all sorts of, of areas, socioeconomically, uh, culturally, ethnicities, whatever. And we need to pray God stamp out to begin with in my heart, your heart, our hearts, any racial tension. Stamp it out. Get rid of it. Get rid of all innuendos. Get rid of all thoughts about negative anyone else. And secondly, God, get rid of all racial tension, anything that may still remain in our church. People say, well, I was raised this way. I don't care. It still doesn't make it right. It's still sin. Racism sin. It's demonic. I don't care how, which way it goes. It doesn't matter. We've all got prejudices of some sort. We need to get rid of things that hamper the plan of God. There may be prejudices. Some of us of an older generation, yeah, I, I did say that, didn't I? And we have prejudice looking down on a someone that's younger and say, well, what does that whippersnapper happen? What do they know? I mean, we, when they get like us, then they'll understand. Why don't maybe we need to do a reverse take and go maybe try to understand where they're at? See, these are all prejudices. These are all things that can hamper the move of God. But folks, we need a prayer of unity over the divisions in our country. Is everybody okay with that? Would you agree with that? I'm just kind of just breathing this out as God kind of just shares this. And this is how I'm going to pray. I didn't have plans to do it this way. And if you get offended by this, then you need to pray and ask God to forgive you. You need to let go of your offenses. I'm going to ask some of our white brothers and sisters to find some of our African-American brothers and sisters. And you join hands together. And you pray together. Would you do that? Would you do that? That means you may have to step out of where you're at, you know? Hallelujah. Father, I come to you today and I'm thanking you for the anointing of your spirit on this church. That there's something supernatural, something special of the makeup of this house. God, there's a lot of things that I have not had to endure over years because of the color of my skin and my brothers and sisters have had to go through things maybe because of the color of their skin and it is not right, it's demonic it is not of you and so you're bringing a restoration and you're saying how good it is for brothers to dwell together in unity not just in supposed unity not just in just because we're praying this prayer that, but because we're saying from our hearts God we deal, deal with it in our own spirits anything that is racially motivated, anything that is harmful, anything that has hurt because of our upbringing. God, we, we choose to cast it aside and pray, God, help me love everyone. Restore unity across our nation. In the name above every name we pray. God, help us to walk in understanding of each other. Help us to walk in maturity. And realize none of us have the right answers all the time. And that there's areas us need to, we need to still learn and grow and cast down the things that have destroyed us. And walk together with the things that encourage us and build us. And I pray it in the name above every name, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Can you say amen? How many believe God's going to do a work? Amen. <laughs> Folks, yeah, just go and hug somebody right now. That'd be a good time to do that. Just go and hug somebody. But everybody look up at the screen. Would you pray next with me? Pray for the families of those that's recently been killed in Las Vegas. I saw a news show, that, a show the other day, and it had the, the husband. He had been married 31 or 32 years. And they began to walk, he began to pull her out if they, if they first thought it was not guns. They began to walk out. The next thing he knows, at some point, him taking her out by the hand, she had been shot in the head and she was killed. And he said, I just want you to see the smile, know her for her smile. What a beautiful smile she had. Beautiful lady that had the life and joy in some mad, demonic field person. What you need to understand, number one, is God loved that man. But he chose to walk a path and refuse the love of God. Let me tell you, God did not cause this. This is because of evil. And we live in a sin-filled, fallen world. But the church is still the church. God is still God. And we need to come around them. I, we don't, I may not know, ever meet anybody that of those, what, 59 people killed, any of those family members. One of our AG churches was on the news. They have, they are really being used of God to minister. I believe they even had some of the family of their church at that concert. I don't know if there was any deaths or whatever from their church. But we have, and not the, just the AG, but there's, there are churches around that are ministering to his people. Could we pray for them? Father, we hurt as a nation. We hurt as a nation when there is destruction of people's lives. We need Jesus. We need your comfort, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. We need your intervention. This is not anything that you caused. Man made a choice. When Adam and Eve was put on this earth and allowed Satan to come in and reign and rule and walk in dominion, and that demonic, evil, murderous spirit that stepped in and has destroyed countless lives, not just at this time, but even in many other times it has happened around this world recently. We need you, Jesus. I rebuke the demonic in the name of Jesus. I come against every power of hell that it has to bow at the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that is against the Spirit of God has to fall, has to be, uh, has to back down, has no authority because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I pray for the protection of our, of our nation and around the world. Innocent people have been slaughtered. God, there's another area involved, not necessarily in that type of violence, but God, when things like that seem to happen, our nation rises up in unity and, and, and hurt. But God, every day, thousands of babies are killed in the wombs of their moms, aborted and lives are destroyed, murdered every day. God, return us back to the sanctity of life. Father, 
I just speak and I pray and I ask every abortion facility would be shut down and closed in the name of Jesus. Because how precious those babies are. I pray over mothers. They find out they're pregnant and it is God, I pray that that they would realize and be open even to adoption of parents that are maybe can't have children themselves but want to adopt. But they would their hearts would turn to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray over mothers that have in the past aborted their babies. They are feeling such remorse and, and they feel like God, what have I done? God, I praise you. They can receive and they can have the forgiveness of God and they're restored. God, come around them and just soothe those regrets and realize that that is gone and there's a new day in the name of Jesus. Would you look up at the screen? Concerning the healing of our nation, could we pray for those impacted by the recent storms, Puerto Rico and Florida and Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and there are other places, other states and other countries uh, in the Caribbean that I didn't have up there. Could we pray for them? We have in our church two or three families. They have family members there. They live in Puerto Rico. They need our prayer. Would you pray God's provision? Father, we we come in agreement. God, that you would provide for them. You'd renew their hearts to realize, God, there's going to be a new day. Father, you use the Assemblies of God, the Red Cross, the Samaritan's Purse, and many other agencies to uh, to bring life and uh, support and strength to come around. This church has has given financially, sent it to Convoy of Hope to to provide food and sustenance and clothing, whatever. Father, we pray that you would calm that internal storm in those lives that have been. Even there's a hurricane just come in down in, in the Gulf area. God, just minister. You're the one that calms the storms. And we pray that in the name, above every name, Jesus. There's another area that's being eroded. Can I challenge you that we need to pray for marriages and families? Malachi 4, 5, and 6 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. We need to pray for healing of fractured and dysfunctional family situations, asking God to bless and protect the young and the vulnerable. Because guys... It's God's will for parents and children to love and serve, protect, and honor one another. Because the family was one of the first institutions that God created. I need to believe families matter. Amen. We need to pray over marriages that are crumbling. I'm talking about Christian marriages. Restoration over too many, or I believe one divorce is too many. I understand there's situations that have caused that and happened and maybe some even threat of life and, and no, you don't need to be in that kind of situation. I understand that. But I'm just saying where Satan has come in and has brought division, we need to pray that hearts of kids are turned to their parents and the parents of their kids and husbands and wives to each other. I want to remind you there's not one issue God cannot solve. How many's married in a family today? I guess that's all of us. Could we stand together? Let's pray over them. If you're by your partner, and I'm talking about your husband or your wife, we need prayer. How many of you would say, my marriage needs prayer? Now, please understand, I'm going to lift my hand. I've been married 35 years. I just want more prayer. Amen? Amen. I can't believe that I get to do life by 35. Marriage, year old marriage, that I'm married to my wife 35 years. We used to be 35. I 
get to, I get to be married. I've not always pleased her. I have wronged her. I've not always been the husband that I should have been. I've done stupid stuff, including yesterday. Yesterday I was dead tired. I was exhausted, plum tired. Cheryl wanted her car washed. And uh, and she wanted to take it and have it washed. She didn't feel like doing it. I didn't feel like doing it. It's too hot. And so there you go. And I said, baby, I'll do it. I was just sitting in my chair. I said, I'll go do it. She said, no, you said, no, I'll go do it. I said, I'll go do it. Yesterday afternoon, I got home from the camp out had to set my tent up because it was wet and was drying out. Christopher came home from class and he helped me take it down and then he parked my truck. We have a double driveway and normally my truck is right behind his car. So yesterday when I decided, so yet he decided he'd put, because I'd leave earlier on Sunday mornings, he put it on the opposite side, right beside his car. Cheryl's car is in the garage. You've already read ahead of me, haven't you? I knew it was there, but every time if I'm driving her car and I look back, I look in that right rear view mirror to see that I'm not hitting Christopher's car. Well, I did that. Then all of a sudden, boom, and I knew it. I walked out there and there's this dent in the bumper. And I had to go tell Cheryl. And she said, we have two more payments on that car. <laughs> Come November, we are we don't have any debt on a car. We still got debt, but our, our car is paid off. <laughs> Thing about this, she still loves me. She does. We did go get her car washed, yes. <laughs> Could we pray over our marriages and our families? Father. My marriage is, in my thoughts, in your thoughts, perfect. No, not we're perfect, but you're perfect. And you are the Lord of my marriage. I repent before you, Father, for not being the husband and the father of my children at times that, and I've put other things, beef, beef, not just beside them, but in front of them over the years at times. I repent, God, to my family. God, work through me. Work through Cheryl. Work through our children, Christopher, Megan, and Brian, and our grandchildren. Work through each of these marriages and families. Every one of us that were married and our family, we lifted up and said, we need prayer. It doesn't say we got desperate situations. It just means we're just desperate for God because we want more of you. We want to become stronger because there's no marriage that is perfect or no family. We're just all living life together, growing. But, Lord, sometimes Satan sneaks in, and then then he don't want to let go. So there are some agendas that we need to lay down. There are some situations we need to lay down and, and humble ourselves before each other. I thank you for marriages and families turn hearts back to each other. I praise them in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask our worship team to come. If you would look up on the screen. Lastly, how many believe we need to pray for the church to rise up? The church is the body of Christ. We need to rise up. God says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Here's some areas we need to pray for. And this is one, the church, that's all of us. Would you do me a favor? Would you step out from where you're at and come stand across this altar? We're the church. Let's all come be together. And I want to ask those that are attending, go ahead and light the candles. We're going to all receive communion here at the front. But come on, would all the church come?
Would, would you come be with me? Here's the areas while you're coming that I want us to pray for. May we pray, number one, that we will love God passionately. Secondly, we will love people unconditionally. And thirdly, we'll stand strong in the midst of attacks. That's where God would have us be at. Matt, I don't think it was by chance you were here today. Because it just, it's the unity. It's, it was the unity God established with our church and your church there on that, on that property. You're my brothers. And um, here in a few minutes, as brothers and sisters, we're going to see the table of God unites us. We're going to receive communion together here in a moment. But I want us to pray, and as, as they're passing it out, you can still pray. They, if you feel them putting it in your hand, just, just go ahead and receive it. Just keep praying. But could we pray for the church to rise up, that, God, you would cause us to love you more passionately, love people unconditionally, and stand up strong in the midst of the things of this world. Come on, pray out loud with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I praise you, Lord, for such a time as this that you have called us together to be the church, not the church denominationally, God, that it's that one is better or this is that, God, but the church that loves you, the church that believes in the divine Son of the living God, and that the only way to salvation is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that we would stand up once again and love unconditionally, that we would love God, people that uh, we don't understand or people that's not like us, people that, Lord, not just those we like. We love people unconditionally and let you change them. God, your, you, your, your desire is to uh, impact people's lives with the gospel. Those that are uh, got it right and those that don't got it right yet. And you're bringing them in to Jesus. Restore them and use this church. Use Matt's church. Use countless others, thousands of churches in this nation to impact people's lives. And then even in the midst of the storm, you said, I will build my church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And to you, God, we give you praise. To you, God, we give you thanks. Hallelujah.